Hey there, plant enthusiasts. We're back at it again. My name is Brad and welcome back to my channel where we talk about the beauties of indoor gardening. Today, we're going to talk about the Polia peperimoides, affectionately known as the Chinese money plant or the pancake plant. This trendy and beautiful house plant is a favorite among plant enthusiasts and it's easy to see why. With its unique foliage and easy growing nature, it's easy to see why this plant is a winner. So join me as we immerse ourselves into how to care and grow for the Polia peperimoides. Let's go! <laughs> into the details of the Chinese money plant, let's take a brief moment to marvel at the captivating history. Originating from a province in China, the Polia peperimoides was a hidden gem until it was introduced into the Western world in the 1940s. Its nickname, the Chinese money plant, can be attributed to the coin-like foliage, which symbolizes both prosperity and abundance, a great addition to any home or office space. Let's kickstart our care journey by first talking about watering. Watering is crucial for the care of your Polia peperimoides. You don't want to overwater it, but you also don't want to underwater it. What I like to do is I like to keep my Polia peperimoides in a terracotta pot. This ensures or helps with making sure that I don't overwater the plant. There are a couple of ways that you can check to see whether or not your plant is ready to be watered. The first thing I like to do is look at the soil surface. Is the soil surface damp or dry? If it's dry, I move on to the second step. The second step is to simply take my finger and stick it into the first inch or so of the soil, like so. When I pull my finger out, I see that there is still some dirt deposit on my finger. If you get this dirt deposit on your finger, you know it's not yet time to water your plant. If, however, you pull your finger out and it comes out dry and clean, then you know you might be ready to water. If I'm not yet quite sure if my palea is ready to be watered, Another thing that I can do is look at the bottom of the root ball. Some people like to take the root ball entirely out of the pot. That isn't always necessary. What you can instead do is use a hole on the bottom of the pot, stick your finger in it, and feel if it's damp, dry, or somewhere in between. This polia is still wet on the bottom, which makes sense because when I stuck my finger in, I knew that I wasn't yet ready to water. But if it is dry, then absolutely you want to water your plant. The key is also to make sure that you reduce the number of wet dry cycles that your Polia peperimoides encounters. The wet dry cycles will stress the plant, which in turn is bad for the plant. Not only is it bad for the plant, but if your plant goes through too many wet dry cycles, what you'll find is when watering, the water will simply roll over the top of the root ball and seep out of the edges, as opposed to fully saturating top to bottom. If you like videos like this and would like to see more videos about plant care tips and tricks, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. It's totally free and would mean a lot. Thank you so much. Now back to the video. Just like with people, the Polia peperimoides enjoys a well-balanced diet. Be sure to feed it with an all-purpose 10-10-10 NPK value fertilizer. This is the ratio that should be used when fertilizing your Polia. The 10-10-10, mind you, is just a simple ratio. So, for instance, if you look on the back of a fertilizer and you see 111, that is also an appropriate fertilizer to use for your polia. The same with the 222. The question also arises of whether or not you should dilute the fertilizer that you use for your polias. I like to grow this polia outside in the spring and summer. Because of that, my polia likes to feed heavily. I do not dilute my fertilizer. If my polia is being grown indoors, I want to make sure that I dilute the fertilizer to have strength. This will ensure that I do not get fertilizer burn on the foliage, which will show as yellowing leaves. Now let's talk about light. The polia peperimoides can survive in a wide range of lighting conditions, from mid-level light to high-level light. The key is, what are your leaves used to? You'll notice that this particular polia not only has a lot of pups, but it also has large disc-shaped leaves. This is because I grow my polia outside in the spring and summertime. You might notice though that if you grow your polia indoors, that your disc-shaped leaves are actually smaller. That's okay. The reason why your disc-shaped leaves are smaller is because your polia isn't receiving that outdoor light. And due to that, it doesn't need to produce big leaves in order to take in and soak up all of that energy that the sun is producing. 
Also be mindful that when your plea grows, to keep it rotated. If you don't keep your plea rotated, you'll notice that your plea will start to lean. Again, the plea has a stem and the leaves grow up the stem. Like with many plants, your leaves are gonna grow in the direction of the sun. If you want your polia to stay vertical, try keeping your polia rotated. I like to rotate this polia, even outdoors, every four or so weeks. That has allowed me to keep a nice vertical stem. As the polia gets taller and taller, hopefully I'll be able to keep the stem in a nice vertical shape. There are some people, however, who like to have their plants have a unique curvature characteristic. If you want to have your plant grow in this unique curvature-like way, you don't have to rotate your plant as frequently, but it's still advisable to rotate your plant. Otherwise, your lean will be so extreme that your plea will be unable to support itself. One of the unique joys about the Palea peperimoides is its unique growth habit. If you look, you'll notice that the Palea grows from a stem. Leaves unfurl from the center of the Palea, but at the same time, if your Palea is very happy, you'll start to get pups that pop up throughout your plant. So as you can see here, I have a main stem on my Palea but I also have a pup that is starting to grow and become quite mature. And it might be time for me to re either remove this pup to put in a separate pot and propagate, or just to let it grow and just see the unique shape that my polia will take on. There are a couple of ways that you can tell whether or not it's time for your polia to have a pot upgrade. One of the things that you can do is look at the bottom of your pot. From the bottom of your pot, if you see exposed roots, it may be time for a pot upgrade. If you look at the top of your pot and you see roots that are wrapped around, then it also may be time for a pot upgrade. Pot upgrading is important for a couple of reasons. The first reason why it's important is because it allows your root system to continue to expand. Plants don't like to be root bound. By giving your plants more room to expand and flourish, it will help to support more upward and top growth. A second reason why having a bigger pot is better is because when your plant becomes extremely root bound, the nutrients available to the plant diminish. You will have more roots than soil and also it will become more difficult to keep your plant properly watered. Another thing you'll find with the Plea Preparimoides if you don't upgrade your pot when it's time is that it will become more difficult and challenging to keep it properly watered. Your Plea might start showing signs of being underwatered despite the fact that you're watering it on an appropriate and consistent basis. With an excessive amount of roots, you'll find that you'll need to water your plant more frequently. One thing to be mindful of the polia with its beautiful, large, disc-shaped foliage is dust. What I like to do in order to address dust is to put my polia underneath the sink. From there, I turn the faucet on and I let the water hit the foliage from the top all the way down to the bottom. One of the things that I have to be mindful of when I do this is that the foliage completely dries. This is important because if it doesn't, you might expose your Palea peperimoides to fungal diseases. Now that we've covered care tips for your Palea peperimoides, let's talk about troubleshooting. You might notice a couple of things happening with your Palea peperimoides. One of those things is droopy leaves. Typically, if your leaves are droopy, that is either a sign that you're over or underwatering your plant. The easiest way to make that determination is to check the root ball. If the root ball is super saturated, that means you've overwatered your plant. If, however, your root ball is completely blown dry, that means it could be time to water your plant thoroughly and fully. Be mindful that under and over watering can look very similar to one another. The easiest way to make that determination of whether or not your plant needs water is to examine the root ball. If you feel that your plant is properly watered and you still have these droopy leaves, it could be a sign that your plant has experienced root shock. If you have recently transplanted your polia into another pot and have disturbed the roots an extensive amount or even sometimes a small amount, it can cause your leaves to droop. But don't worry, your plant will bounce back once it has put on a fresh flush of roots that will help it to reabsorb the nutrients in the soil. Another thing that you'll notice with the polia is that it is susceptible to pests. These pests include things like mealybugs, spider mites, and thrips. There are a couple of ways that you can tackle these pests. When it comes to spider mites and mealybugs, you can use a solution of baking soda, dish soap, and water. The ratio would be one tablespoon of baking soda 
one tablespoon of dish soap, and one gallon of water. From there, be sure to spray your foliage. Once you spray your foliage, wipe the leaves. The key is to make sure that you wipe. Once you wipe, see if your plant recovers. If, however, you believe that your plant has thrips, the only way you can cure this is with a systemic pesticide. Don't bother using the dish soap baking soda mixture because it will not work. It has to be a systemic pesticide. Polia peperimoides do enjoy high humidity levels. If you notice browning on the tips of your leaves, this is a sign that your polia may be experiencing too low humidity. If this is the case, you should find a way to up the humidity level within your home. The easiest way to do this is to use a humidifier. Placing the humidifier near your polia will absolutely help raise the humidity level around the plant and should help to allow it to recover. Be mindful though that once your tips start to brown, they will not get green again. Focus on the foliage that does not yet have the browning areas. And there you have it, how to care for and troubleshoot the beautiful polia peperimoides. It really is a beautiful plant. Just remember to be mindful of your watering. Be sure that you're feeding and fertilizing your plant. Be mindful of your lighting conditions. Remember how to troubleshoot your plant if you do see signs of deterioration and you're all set. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one.